very warm room. Ooh, live! Hey! Woo! It's really a look, Jeff. I, this is my Sunday night routine. I. Woo! Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Kitchen Party! Woo! Can we get a woo woo for the cookies? Woo woo! -woo, -woo. <laughs> Uh, welcome everyone who's watching at home. These are new earphones, so actually, I they they make me sound weird to myself. So if for some reason during the show I act bizarre and like start listening to myself, uh, don't be alarmed, guys. Uh, you know I'm a little crazy sometimes after a couple of cocktails. Uh, my name is Babette Peppa. I'm the founder of Bakespace.com and one of the co-hosts of Kitchen Party. Eh? And you are Kitchen Party. And also you're wondering probably why we're looking a little bizarre in our outfits. This is usually not our normal attire. We have decided that this is a pajama jam. It's a cookie crawl pajama jam. And thanks to Jeff for kind of committing us to the, the pajama rule. <laughs> um, this is gonna be hysterical. So, anyways, and also it will be forever on the web, so I want you guys to I want you guys to remember this moment. Um, Jeff, do you want to do you want to introduce yourself real quick, and then we'll also uh, introduce our guests as well. My name is Jeff, and I'm drinking a very nice Chardonnay. Um, I'm the food writer for the Kitchen Party, although that might change by the end of the show. Uh, and I'm uh, I'm really into my Sunday night routine, so that's why I look like this. What is on your face? I have some lovely Nivea cream. Some cleansing cream, and um, you know my hair just got out of the shower, so I'm a bit really. I hope that uh, you're not going to have a rash, like for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> you know that might be the nicest thing anyone said to me this week. <laughs> oh my God. I want to have our Jeff right now. Hey, Gail, do you want to introduce yourself and tell people where they can find you on Twitter? I am and I have my Twitter handle is at the touch of the I am a I'm having a terrible time hearing about that stuff going back on me. Um I have a company here in New York and I do decorated cookies all the time. I do them uh, as favorite cookies, I do them on cake. Cookies are my life, basically. I know, I was going to ask you about the tough cookie and where that came from. Well, my business is called One Tough Cookie, and I made it up in the shower when I was thinking of names for this business. Uh, my partner, my wife, um, really hated the, hated the name desperately. She wanted the company to be perhaps named our two middle names, which would have been... Eileen Wright, um, and that's just a little too bland for me. And I <laughs> went back and forth and back and forth, and I finally said to, to another friend of ours, I can't think of another name. I, I'm having the worst time thinking of a name other than One Tough Cookie. And she said, that's because One Tough Cookie is the best name, and you don't have to think of anything else. I said, that's it, running to registration right now. So I did. Are those I mean, the tough cookie? Because I'm, you know, instead of the president or the CEO, I, I mean, who else would I be but the tough cookie of one tough cookie? So my official title is the tough cookie. <laughs> now, in your picture on Twitter, are those actually the glasses? Are they cookies? Yes, they are, and I see very well out of them. <laughs> I put my contact lenses in tonight. Very cool. Now, Kathy, do you want to introduce yourself to those who are watching at home? Um, I'm Kathy Barrow. I'm known as Mrs. Wheelbarrow on the web everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. With MrsWheelbarrow.com is my website. I mostly do preserving. That's my shtick. But around the holidays, I go a little cookie mad. And I make 30 or so varieties of cookies and mail them all over the country. In fact, all over the world, all of December. It's a, it's a sickness. <laughs> well, you've come to terms with it. I think that's what's important. I have. <laughs> I love the Christmas tree behind you, by the way. Thank you. Yes, I, I set myself. M remember, Jeff, the last time we were together, Mr. McGrumpy was behind me, the painting. Yes. Right, yes. so I wanted to make sure there was a better background this time. You no, know, I appreciate your consideration that way. <laughs> 
So now speaking of um, cookies, if you guys are at home and you're watching and you want to participate in the conversation, if you're watching on Google+, on YouTube, uh, Bakespace, uh, if you're part of the conversation on Twitter, use the hashtag kitchen party so we can ask questions. And then Jeff and I will monitor the social uh, streams. Um, we don't have Renee here for some reason. Renee like refused to like reply to our tweets and no, our emails. No, no, I was no, like, no. She, she called me. <laughs> oh, she did? Yeah, she... Um, she sounds like Harvey Firestein, and I know offense, but she um, she sounds like there are like two gerbils fighting it out in her throat. She is horribly, horribly sick, and oh, she sends her uh, she sends her apologies, but um, she is uh, she's still watching, and she'll probably hold it against me that I just referred to her as Harvey Firestein and two gerbils <laughs> in her throat. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> so speaking of cookies, now do you guys want to uh, first of all give me a little bit of background on like what your cookie preparation is? Like when you guys are making your holiday cookies, how do you prepare for like the season's batch? Do you guys think of like new recipes for the holidays, or do you kind of like have like ten recipes that you guys do all the time? Kind of what's what goes through pre prepping for that? You want to Kathy, talk why don't you talk, Kathy, why don't you talk about the personal cookie arena, and I'll talk about what I do business-wise. Right. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do a little show and tell here. Here no, is this is a cookie platter that I did. Can you see that? Okay, so there are like 30 kinds on here, and this will be going to a neighbor. Oh, cool. Um, I start in November, right after Thanksgiving. Usually the grocery stores put all of the baking items on sale right after Thanksgiving for bakers and go, I get flour and butter and sugar. I mean, like enormous quantities. I think I went through 15 pounds of butter wow. in order to do my cookies. Yes, it's a serious thing. And I get the chocolate and whatever else. As far as new recipes, you can just forget that because once you start this sort of thing, people <laughs> want the same cookies. That's They're like, very cool. what do you mean you're not going to make the ginger chocolate or those peanut butter ones are coming? Right. I mean, they, right. they would kill me if I didn't send them. So uh, sometimes I add a new one, but that just adds more problems you know, because now I have more cookies. <laughs> yeah, Kathy um, actually, Kathy, I'm going to interrupt you for one second because okay. I'm, I'm already a little looped. Um, you said. <laughs> cookies to a mutual friend of ours in Connecticut and she was talking about on Twitter she was talking about something about um, pecans and I said to her I tweeted to her did you try the peanut butter chocolate chip and she said I didn't get those and I, I thought know. oh my god did she ever get short trip <laughs> no I sent her a lot of rugula that's what she really wanted. Ruggla. Oh, she said they were so, favorite cookie. But it just show. But it does go to show that you know when you're used to a certain assortment and you know you have favorites. I mean that peanut butter chocolate chip is just beyond. So I was disappointed that for her that she didn't get it. But yes, it's okay. So yes. we yeah. People do get used to certain cookies and they really do. They don't want to have that menu changed from year to year. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Why do you I, uh, think that is? Is it just because it's a comfort thing that like reminds them of holidays, or? I think the holidays are all about tradition. You know, think about trying to get people to move off of turkey at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, you'll have a complete riot, and yeah. it's this. People feel very uh, attached to certain cookies. Because um, I've tried taking some out that were a big pain in the neck to make, and people say, "Well, where are the little thumbprint cookies?" I start with candy. That's the first thing I make. And I make candy for about two weeks because it has a longer shelf life. And then I have cookies and I know which ones will last how long. So certain ones are made and then the boxes are shipped the next day, like those peanut butter ones. Those right. are the very last ones to be made. Right. So and they're real they're, the cookie is, that cookie is a very tender cookie. That's right. So it's not going to, you know, it, it, you, it cannot be rattled around by one of those, you know, UPS goons. I also, I put all the cookies, and I'm going to take my little platter apart for a minute. I put all of them in little baking cups so that the flavors stay uh, contained. Otherwise, you put a ginger cookie next to a sugar cookie and the, everything starts to taste like right. everything else. Or but mint. This, or mint will permeate everything. You know, it's very invasive. As this a is the cookie. It looks like a plain peanut butter cookie until you go like this. And then you see that it's a sandwich cookie ah. with peanut butter 
and miniature chocolate chips and sort of buttercream in between. That looks delicious. Hey, we do have a question from Google+. Plus. Uh, Melissa Taylor asked a question to you guys. She said, for both of you, how long in advance, because this is, this is a little bit of sort of the question I asked a bit, but I guess she wants more of a timing. Um, how long in advance do you start your cookie platter baking for the holidays? So you said November, is that what you said, Cassie? I start the right as soon as Thanksgiving is over, I start. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to just throw in there that for my for my business in terms of Christmas cookies and people start wanting to send you know corporate gifts and all kinds of things, I start taking orders as early as October so that by the time Thanksgiving has come, I'm usually booked between that time in the middle of, of December when it's all over. Like t as of this week, this upcoming week, it's over. Right. And my last boxes will go out tomorrow and then I'm done. Yeah. Do you, so, like drop, do you like drop the mic or do you drop the spatula and walk out of the room and like go? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jeff and I should be expecting our care packages in how many days? Thursday. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we also have some stuff from Twitter too. I want to uh, let everyone know who's watching right now. We have um, uh, Add Vanilla Bean Bake uh, Gail. Looking fabulous in your leopard print PJs tonight. Hmm, excellent. <laughs> and then Michelle Jenkins also tuned in, was also tweeting out. Um, people are retweeting uh, Jeff's picture with the uh, with the face, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. which is hysterical. So those of you who are tuning in, we are going to be checking in on our Twitter stream and our Google Plus page. Uh, Could somebody do me a favor and forward that photo to the Pulitzer board because I think that that will take <laughs> <Yeah>. special consideration. <laughs> that is, well, I want to show you guys my cookie platter that I got. Now, I, I cheated. I actually, um, at about 4 o'clock, I realized I had no cookies in the house because I ate them all from all the parties I've gone to. I went to the uh, Food Bloggers Los Angeles party last weekend, and they had the most amazing cookies I've ever had in my life. There was one cookie that was made with sake, which um, uh, Kim, Kim, Kim uh, uh, Watkinson, I always say her last name wrong, uh, who actually watches our show, she was there, and she blew me away. They were the best cookies I've ever tasted in my life. In fact, I, I wanted to go back and get more, and I only brought myself like a little container, like this big, full, and I was like, this is what I'm going to commit to, and I'm not going to get any more cookies. And I was trying to like stuff them inside the container. <laughs> um, but I went to Gelson's, <laughs> which I'm really embarrassed. But they're so cute that I, this I have to share with you guys. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, oh, oh. those are the old traditional ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and then we got like a little, um, there's this one. This I think this is the cutest one. You mean, you like, a is that a decorated cookie, Babette? Yeah, oh, it's, it like, is. it's like a little mitt. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> a little bit. Like if, if I'm ever cold, I'll just eat it. You ought to send, you ought to send that to uh, Average Betty for her little baby. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Well, well I want to do a shout out to uh, the DC Food 52 people who came to my house today for a cookie swap, and this is what they left me. Whoa. I don't even know. There are hazelnut tools and toffee and painted cookies and cranberry bars and rum balls and I'm in trouble man seriously these are <laughs> there are way too many cookies in my house right now <laughs> I love cookies with like alcohol in them like the rum balls and the, all yeah. those kinds of things um, I'm what, shocked what's a, these, good, what's a good these alcohol are to bake hand with? painted oh those are so cute oh wow aren't they pretty yeah, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to make a cookie like that? Me? About no, a week I mean, and a I, half. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's amazing the detail that people put into it. It's You know, when I go to these blogger things, too, uh, but that it seems like everybody's, like, trying to do uh, Purple Rain better than the uh, than Prince. You know what I mean? It's like everybody's trying to outcook each other, and you get these amazing cookies, but you're like, there's no way I could do that. It, Gail, do you have any cookies there to show? Well... I have a half of a naked Santa. <laughs> oh, right. I'm not naked. He's na naked only the cookie is naked. Uh, not, not a naked <laughs> No, no. How? I don't do naked. How? Hold on a second. I'll come How? and get him. Oh my god, I wish Renee was here. <laughs> right now, Renee is somewhere laughing so hard she's coughing. <laughs> Renee would know just what to say. <laughs> oh, I did get these cookies too. They were um they're blueberry. They're white chocolate blueberry, white chocolate covered blueberries. I don't oh, think you guys can see those as well. 
Yummy. Ooh, that smells. Ooh, ah, ah. Oh, you can't really see it, but the packaging. But they have these, um, these like blueberries in them. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah. yeah. Yum. See his little face is gonna go right in there. Ah. And he's gonna have a nice big mustache. This is a great client of mine who, um, is incredibly supportive, and she has a, a little four-year-old who she adores. Mm -hmm. And the four-year-old is going to be giving little bags of cookies to her friends. Like four That's cookies nice. It's really nice. And Thank it's you. a nice note to stop, you know, to end my season on because I love this client so much. She's great. Hey, Gail, do you have any um, suggestions on, like, if people, because I know there's a lot of people who would love to do stuff like that where they actually almost, like, paint on top of the... With their with their mm -hmm. frostings, any advice for people who want to do something that's that beautiful and refined? How, how yeah. do you do that? Don't do it. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, what you what you really want to do is if you if you're going to embark on a big project. Oh, Gail. Also, make sure you tilt your because when you stood up, make sure you tilt your screen down a little bit because your face is getting cut off. Oh, perfect. Perfect. You look good. Uh, when you when you go into one of these projects, it it all looks so wonderful with all the colors and all the stuff. And once you start mixing colors with royal icing, after the third color, you want to shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> my my suggestion is to pick a palette and keep it as simple as possible. One, two, three colors max. Just especially if you're a beginner, because you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to have a big mess. And you're not going to want to finish what you've done. So that's my first suggestion. My second suggestion is bake the cookies first. Make do it. Have a you know a whole production line. Make your doughs first and keep those simple. I mean, I I have a very simple menu. My cookie dough uh, that I offer, the cookies that I offer, are vanilla, mm -hmm. chocolate, and at the win in the holiday season, I do offer gingerbread. That's it. Um, it makes life a lot simpler, and those are also very sturdy cookies to decorate and sturdier yet to ship. So that's the first thing. Make sure you have your dough ready. Then bake off, cut and, and bake off your cookies in a day or two, at the beginning of your week. Get that all done. Then put your doughs, put your rolling pin away, get rid of your scraps, bake those off for yourself, and then start the next day with a clean counter and begin decorating. It just really helps your mind to like clear your head and do one little thing at a time, and you'll be much better off. That's what I would say. And work in a, as clean and neat an environment as you can. Hmm. It's a very feng shui kind of a, a headset. If you have a cluttered counter with mixing bowls and spatulas and and crap all over the place, you're gonna feel boxed in. Your head isn't gonna be able to to think clearly. The ideas won't flow. Your work won't be neat, and you won't be happy. Don't don't take after me. I mean, that's what <laughs> that's what happens to me nine times out of ten. And I have to always stop and say, all right, clean up, make some space, calm down, take a deep breath move on and that'll really help yeah, and google a, images are your best friends go to the what google image is your best friend for ideas hmm. you know I, I have a hard time when i'm when i'm in my house and i have to think of like i'm working or whatever i there's like if if there's certain parts of my house that are messy i like completely can't function at all so i start with the bathroom and it's like the smallest room. If I can just conquer that, then I can do the rest of the house. And then I go to the kitchen, and then the living room, and then I—it's like I'm procrastinating doing my home office, like just yeah. yep. one by one by one. <laughs> I, I feel the same way about shredding um, junk mail. I keep like a—I always swear to myself that I'm going to shred it on a daily basis, and I don't. And so it starts to pile up, and then I get depressed. And then once I shred it, I'm free. I'm free. So it's this, you know, really, there's a lot to that, to that kind of thinking as far as, you know, creative people are concerned. You know, you mentioned about shipping, and I think a lot of people at this time right now, some people are, like, already into their baking and they're trying to get those packages out. Any advice you have for um, shipping cookies? I do a lot of shipping. 
Um, I know Gail does shipping for her business, but from a, you know the personal baking, I buy all my tins at the end of the year. So the Container Store is a great place, Michael's, all of that. Right around Christmas, they'll all go on sale, and I just try to um, bank those and stick them in the basement until next year. That's a so, very good, yeah. And tins are really important. Tins will keep your cookies fresh. Um, cardboard doesn't, and, but tins are great. Plastic is good, but it can weep, and it can get uh, moist in there, and so right. some crispness can be lost. The right. tin is your, is your friend. Now, I, this year, I had a really good time on Etsy. I bought a couple of uh, vintage tins, and I brought this one to show it. Look at how cute this is. Isn't that adorable with oh, these little cute. handles? How yeah, can you I, send that to somebody? You're saying? Well, no, that's what happened. See? <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one, and I'll probably like put cookies in it to take over to a party, and then oh. I will bring it back because okay. I can't give that one away. I did give a couple of them away. Um, two antique ones that were really charming to people that I knew would appreciate them. But oh, for the most please. part, the, the container store is your friend, especially And that's right why I Christmas. like boxes. I am a box. When I bring stuff to somebody, I do it in a cardboard baker's box, a bakery box, and I stuff it with tissue or with parchment, and whatever they want to do with it, I don't have to worry. You know, it's like that old, like if they don't give me my Tupperware back, then I'm not, they're not my friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Then I, I would have that same feeling about those tins. That would just drive me to. That would drive me crazy. Well, I get a lot of them back. I really do. Oh, People send them back because they, they they want they should, the cookies. I was yeah, gonna say exactly. they should have a thing that says like refill, like you know, like send it back to me and you'll get another one next year. That's like right. um, we did get Melissa Taylor, um, dessert chick on Twitter. She says Rip, uh, recipients of my cookie tins know by now they are going to get weird cookies, and by weird. She says goat cheese, lavender, bitters, bourbon are some of the ingredients she's been using. Do you guys use any ingredients like that? Goat cheese. I've made. I've done buttercream with goat cheese, and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Lavender is lovely. Lavender is a lovely addition to a shortbread cookie. Absolutely. Delightful. Really delightful. I do some things with Earl Grey tea. That can mm -hmm. be really fun. And there's plenty of alcohol in my. Uh, in my cookies, yes, of all sorts. <laughs> it's funny you guys said uh, you guys were talking about you know when you're shipping it pays to uh, pay attention to what type of cookie. I'm stupid that way. I make pizzelles every year, oh, and uh, oh. and I don't ship them because oh, I did that once and it turned into like you know a Crumbs. graham cracker crust. Right. Um, but uh, but I do take them into work, and it's amazing how. Uh, how even when you're just hand transporting them, you really have to make sure that you're using the right container because they'll even by the time I get them to work, sometimes oh, they'll yeah. just be, you know, crushed, obliterated. I just shipped 250 ornament cookies to a, a company in in Massachusetts, right. and I didn't sleep the night that I shipped them. <laughs> I, I, I really, and it was and I have to say I was really lucky because it was a you know a round ornament with just a little hoo ha on the top. And I packed those things within an inch of my life. There was enough bubble wrap and bubble wrap and more bubble wrap, no bows. It was The cookies were heat sealed and folded over so they'd be flat. I mean, you have to think about these things. And then I put them in a corrugated box in another corrugated box. So it was, you know, the old enigma wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in a whatever. But they, made it, they made it to Massachusetts in one piece. And that was, I mean, that would have been a horrific thing for 250 cookies to be shipped out, you know, and not make it on time. It's sure. not like I had a lot of time to redo them. Right. So, you know, so you have to really think about, sometimes it really helps, especially in the decorated cookie arena. And I've only done this, only started to think about this recently. Think backwards. Don't think about the cookie first. Think about what your box options are first. Mm -hmm. And then work backwards to what size cookie is going to go into that box. You ah. will be so much better off for it. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell. It's really, it makes all the difference in the world. So the most durable cookie would be what? Um, Shape-wise or... or Whatever, whatever, whatever the best, the, the easiest one to get a lot of volume and then also uh, remain intact. Well, well since, oh, go ahead. Anything, anything that doesn't have a skinny stem, like don't, don't do what I do. 
Okay. Don't ship champagne glass shaped cookies. Not a good idea. Okay. Don't ship don't ship guitar cookies. Not a good idea. Um, <laughs> but a short for any shortbread cookie is a you know a sturdy cookie and bake it off, please, for God's sakes. None none of this half assed white cookie stuff. I like a cookie to be brown around the edges. I want that cookie baked thoroughly through. I don't want to taste flour and I don't want it to be, you know, soft in the center because you can't ship a cookie like that. Right. Um, stick with, you know, shapes that just don't have like odd appendages. That's really, really important. And as my wife wow. just reminded me, insure the cookies. Spend the extra couple of bucks and insure the package because FedEx is a, they are wonderful when you have to make a claim. UPS not so wonderful. FedEx, fabulous. Hmm. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to go get this off my face because I don't know how you do this, <laughs> and um, I don't need to be this soft. <laughs> oh, my God. I, now, the I, thing I, that I could say about shipping and cookies is that I make my cookies very small. First of all, they're really rich. Let's remember 15 pounds of butter. They're really rich. And, and if you want to taste a lot of cookies, it's nice to have little teeny cookies. And yeah. so, you know, this is, see, this is a good size right here. It's about a half dollar. And since there are all these different varieties, I just put these little cookies in the tin, and it, it works out. They don't break. Little no, no, like they, that. that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. In fact, I'm going to show you what I mean by a well-baked off sugar cookie. Hold on one sec. Hey Kathy, when yes. you're buying um, when you're buying all that butter, do you do you go anywhere to buy that like a large amount of butter at one time? I do, and Gail will have a fit when she hears me say that. Oh, don't say it. <laughs> I I do love European butter, and when I'm baking small quantities, I use you know the best European butter. But I go to Costco for my butter at the holidays. Gail, just close your ears. <laughs> what, what brand are you buying, though, Kathy? Are you buying their brand? Mm -hmm. You've had my cookies. This is very uncomfortable for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm not bad fine. We're very before friends. she came back. <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> now, and I know. I do know how much, you know, there is a, a, a definite difference between that butter and the European butter. But awesome. I have to um, take my, you know, take cost into account. I, I like to send cookies to a lot of people, and I just have to be serious about this, you know? <laughs> I, I would agree with that, and I agree with you about um, European butter. I think it's, yeah, but I think that the average palate would never be able to detect the difference between, you know, like a Land of Lakes, for example, right. and Ubra. They just, you, it's, you're not going to, it's not discernible. It's not, I mean, you really have to be, I don't know, yes. super, you can't discern it. So it's, I agree, it is not cost effective to use Plugra. I'll tell you, it, I learned it. it in immediate it, family. I went to a cooking, a baking class years ago, and the woman who taught it um, did bake goods for a far, for farmers markets every weekend. And somebody in the class said, "Where do you buy your butter?" Because she used a lot of butter and everything. And so that's where she gets it. And that's so I just followed her lead. Good luck, Jeff. We love. Thanks. Like it. Thank you very much. See, I mean, I get mine from a wholesaler, and even you know, even then. Butter is, you know, it's gone up tremendously. Butter and sugar have just, they're just outrageous, you know, and people yeah. don't, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's a problem. I mean, it's, and it's not going to get any better. And milk's going to go up too. So when I, now going back to, you see, I don't know if you can tell, if you can see this, but this is a very well baked off cookie. You see, there's brown around the edge. Mm -hmm. And this is the back of the cookie. It's, you know, it's brown. I want color. Color is flavor, especially when you're talking about butter and sugar. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, it, can you hear that? Yeah. That's a sturdy cookie. I would, this is a good, this would be an okay cookie to, to ship because it's not so um, spindly over here and it won't, 
have a, a natural breaking point, but you know, I still be a little bit worried. But don't just bake them off properly, please. Now, do you use insulated cookie sheets, or what kind of cookie sheets do you use? Um, regular, no, I don't use insulated. Do you use insulated cookie sheets, Kathy? Never. No. Hey, Gail, don't forget to tilt your your monitor because you did that again where you stood up. Perfect. We're missing you, the leopard. Know, we need to see and, the leopard. And I was going to say, and also, I want to make sure that people realize that I'm not the only one in my pajamas. Because now that <laughs> Jeff looks normal. <laughs> this isn't really the hat that I wear to bed, but you know, I had to counteract. Uh, I had to counteract the left side of the brain with the right side of the brain. Is that a Boston hat? Hell no! Take that back. It is a Tampa Bay Rays hat. A Tampa Bay Rays. Is that baseball? I know that, I know that you're fluent in sports. That's why I said it's fluent. Um, <laughs> no, you know, the, uh, the Boston Red Sox are arch nemesis, and here is the end of the rant. Yeah. No, I, um, I'm keeping it local, yo. Yo. <laughs> now, uh, Gail, are you in New York City? I am. And Kathy, you're in DC. I am. Is yes. there um, is is in your own like community neighborhood? Or do a lot of people bake cookies like and give them as gifts and stuff? Because I know here in LA, it's where it kind of hit and miss. Like uh, it's either a very trendy thing, and like your friends are everyone's going back east for the holidays, and nobody's home, and Christmas Eve the Christmas trees are already on the streets and like <laughs> dying. It's terrible. Um, but then you know you'll find pockets of like communities that like are people who actually live here. Um, but do you guys find that your neighbors like drop off cookies in the front? Uh, nobody would do, not. Nobody gives me a goddamn cookie. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna oh. say it like it is. Totally. I, lo I love you. to hear cookie rage. That's awesome. <laughs> Look, can we talk about the neighbors for just a minute? I mean seriously. So yesterday <laughs> we called our neighbors to say, would you like to come over for some cookies? And they said. Oh, aren't you going to the other neighbor's party tonight? Well, no, <laughs> you are not invited. <laughs> oh my God! So, no, they're not getting any cookies, and I don't expect any from them either. Well, oh, yeah, maybe right. take the other tack. If you did give them cookies, maybe you'd get the invite. No, I decided I was on the A list, and they were having a B list party. Don't wow. you like that? Well, that's Suddenly, this turned into like a cookie baking session with Mean Girls. I was gonna say, you should put something in your cookies and drop it off. Which one of you guys is Regina George? That's what I want to know. What? Which one of you guys is Regina George? Oh, that's funny. In fact, I went to a, I went to a brunch today, and um, the guy, the the host specifically did not ask me to bring cookies, and they served um, two, three kinds of store of cookies that were bought at. Uh, commercial from commercial bakers, hmm. and the gingerbread men were abhorrent. I mean, they should have been. Whoever did it should have been shot. <laughs> this is why we don't get many cookies. You see, right. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many places. Yeah, people feel a little pressure to perform. I think a little intimidated. <laughs> Nobody, but, nobody's but going down to. Fight. Nobody's going down to, the, the, uh, to get a, a sugar cookie roll and, and you know wagging them off and baking them for you because it's uh, it's not going to work. No. Yeah. And by sharp contrast, though, people are not shy at all about saying, "Hey, I'll take your rejects. I got any rejects? I'll take them." And I feel like saying to you know, especially like the banker's wife, you know, if your husband like drops any hundreds on the floor, have him put it my way. Uh, you know, I mean. <laughs> People just have no conception that, you know, if I have a reject cookie, that's money. Mm -hmm. As a, you know, I mean, there was a guy because uh, I used to be in the garment business, you know, in the in ladies' fashion, and there's always some yuckster in cashmere sweaters who's saying, "Hey, I'd love some cookies," and I'm like, "Hey, I'd love some cashmere sweaters." Shuts them up one, two, three. <laughs> it's just, it's hysterical. Are you guys noticing any like cookie trends, like new? Um, yes. What are you guys noticing? Cardamom, 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 really? cardamom, cardamom, cardamom. <laughs> uh, I started. I started to drift off there for a second. That's like an awesome cookie mantra. Cardamom, yeah. cardamom, mm -hmm. cardamom, cardamom, cardamom. Airbrush. <laughs> Airbrushing, yes. Airbrushing. These, bl I mean, I shouldn't say it, but there are a lot of people out there. I mean, the cookie, decorated cookies have changed a lot in the eight years, you know, especially in the last two to three years, particularly. But there are so many new 
techniques that people are bringing in and if you're a blogger you can write about it and you know especially artistic bloggers I'm not I'm neither I'm not artistic nor am I um, a good blogger but these people you know put out you know a couple of cookies for some of these girls put out a couple of cookies for a blog I mean I got hundreds of these suckers to put out and I can't and it drives me crazy and it's it's difficult when somebody calls and sends me a picture of a beautifully airbrushed paint to hand painted cookie and you know and they want it for four dollars on top of it and I'm like oh are you crazy so that's yeah so you know there are a lot of new techniques and I have and I do have an airbrush and I think so far the uh, the best thing that I've airbrushed is my dog. <laughs> speaking speaking of cardamom, uh, we got uh, we got Scott uh, Davis on Google Plus says cardamom. Oh, Scott. Is the, is oh, Scott. Scott. He, he, Scott. Ooh, ooh, we he love says, Scott. He says that's the new cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> you heard you heard it here. You heard it here on Kitchen Party. <laughs> Kitchen Party. <laughs> It's true. I, I just keep running into it everywhere I look. It's all about cardamom. I love cardamom. Uh, I Where think do you maybe, think that's coming from? I think it kicked salted caramel out of the way. Ooh, mm, I love it. <laughs> hey, our oh, producer. Statement. Our producer just sent just me a for note. The year. Yes. Our, our producer sent me a very important note, and she says, "Ask Gail to show us her dog." Okay. You have, yes. you have a new dog, and she just looked up. Oh, she heard the <laughs> dog. <laughs> Vivi, come over here, Vivi. We are all about to be upstaged. I just want to point that <laughs> out. Are. What kind of dog is it? Adorable. She's a Papillon. Oh. <gasps> See, and told you. <laughs> eight months old, and this is the lovely Vivian. Say hello to everybody, Vivi. Oh my gosh, she's like gonna fly away if she just flaps her ears. <laughs> and she and her coloring, as you can see, her coloring goes with my robe. Which is very important. Uh, I feel like I should show you. Well, my dog's asleep right now. On the mine is too. But I can't I have, wake him up. I have like the ugliest dog. <laughs> it's like the exact opposite. She's so ugly. She's cute. It's oh it's like a little applehead chihuahua. That's like. Oh, I love applehead chihuahuas. <laughs> yeah, oh. no, she's. She's uh, she's she. I don't think she's. I don't think she's gonna make it. She's uh, she's very cute Amazing. though. Yeah, we just we just spent sixty dollars today giving them both a bath and doing their nails. And my wait, 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 wait. We forgot to ask the important question. What? What's Gail's dog's name? Vivian. Vivian. Okay, Vivian. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Maybe you asked that. Vivian looked like she was about to change her contacts. Oh, she was. She was licky. She was kissy. She's a kissy girl. And now She's the really parade of This is awesome. Here's this one. Hello, this is Savannah. I would lift up my dogs, but I might have some sort of hernia. Yeah. <laughs> how, how big are your my, dogs? My golden retriever is over 100 pounds. So. Oh my gosh. That's Vivi is topping the scales at 4 pounds 15 ounces. Vivian's a burrito. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She's an hors d'oeuvre. They're an awesome dog, though. Those are awesome, awesome dogs. Yeah, she's a great Pretty. dog. She's lovely. So do you guys have any advice for people who are going to be, uh, like, say if they haven't started their baking yet and they're, like, running out of time now and they're like, i got to make some cookies for my party on Saturday. Um, and <laughs> any, any advice? Because that's me. <laughs> well, well, I think that one of, there are a few ways to really make even a basic cookie, like a chocolate chip cookie, look special. And one way that I found is to use a scoop instead of um, sort of casually throwing plops of dough on the baking sheet. You use a scoop and you can get your cookies to be the same size and then you can um, stack them, you can tie them, you can put them in boxes. Oh, everybody's dog. Hey, Dennis, everybody's dog is on Bake Space. And, I mean, Louis. Oh, my God. What's oh. his name? What's your dog's name, Jeff? This one is uh, Lincoln and the other one is Abraham. Perfect. Oh God. <laughs> Lincoln and Abraham, that's brilliant. I like it. We had Lincoln first, it. and then the other name just sort of came to us. Oh, it's genius. If we had three dogs, we were going to name them Lee, Harvey, and Oswald. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> that is so not good. Lee, <laughs> Harvey, and Oswald. That's terrible. Oh, now I have um, the, now I have the second dog in the screen. 
This is oh, this everybody's is, here. L B. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look. Oh, so sweet. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know, I have that's the animals are like my weakness. Um, you know, I uh, I try to I try to both of them I rescued the last day at the pound and they um, they were going down and they, I, like the rescue groups would call me up and they'd say didn't you get to go see that dog they're on the euthanized list today and it's like oh what am I gonna do <laughs> oh. so now I have two yeah. dogs and three cats my Instagram feed is is it has two subject matters dogs. And cookies. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You should do. Um, do you guys? Do you guys ever do? Do they have you do like uh, doggy treats at all? Like doggy cookies? Have you guys ever done that? I, I happen to. I have a fabulous recipe for a doggy cookie. And, and actually, my other dog. We just lost a dog uh, a few weeks ago. Oh. But and when she turned a year old, of course, we had um, a birthday party for her, and I made dog treats and treats for the kids in the building and the kids in the building were eating the dog treats and they happen to be <laughs> delicious. They're delicious. You, any, a human would want to eat it. It's like better than any you know health food cookie. And I used to make a peanut butter biscuit for our dog, our last dog Dylan. He loved them. He It was all he would eat. He didn't like any other treat. We got Louie. I started making them for him and he was like Puh. Hey, he wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll be over here licking myself. All right, thank you very much. Exactly. He's a he's a meaty guy. He wants like chicken strips and salmon and beef and all that. No peanut butter cookies. Forget that. We do have a question from Google Plus. Um, Scott Davis wants to know. Well, first first thing he he made a um, his first post was I joined just in time to hear Gail ship her hoo ha. Well, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> then the second thing, he actually has a question. This is, this is legit. Um, what about salted versus unsalted butter in cookie making? I can't tell the difference. Oh, really? Oh, I can. Oh, there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, if you use salted butter, then omit the salt from the recipe. If you use unsalted butter, add some salt. Period. End of story. Actually, that's good to know because sometimes I'm like, oh shoot, all I have is salted butter. Can yeah. I actually do with this if I just omit the salt? Then um, you know, there's a wonderful recipe for um, it was Judy Rogers from you know the late great Judy Rogers from Zuni Cafe. Her pie crust recipe, which you make like um, puff pastry, right. uh, she calls for salted butter. I never buy salted butter. I just add a you know a teaspoon or so of or half a teaspoon, whatever it is, of salt to the to the water, and that's the end of that. You know, I have like an electric stove. I don't have like a gas stove or anything like or a convention. I, I don't use the convection part of it. Um, it is there anything I can do? Because I know you know an electric stove. You know the heat kind of goes like this in waves. Um, is there anything I can do to kind of make it more kind of consistent? So I'm not wondering if I'm gonna get Overdone or underdone? Do you, for, do you have the convection option on your stove? On your yeah, oven? I do. Yeah, I've never used it. Use it. Use it okay. when you bake cookies. What does that do to it? Because the air, I just almost hung myself with my hair, with my um, earphones. Um, the air blows that heat around, and it really makes it much more even. The other thing you want to do is midway through your, if you if your cookie is supposed to bake for 20 minutes. Uh -huh. At 10 minutes, shift your um, shift your cookie sheets from one uh, rack to the other and rotate. You'll be good. Okay. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Yes, very important. Mm -hmm. Shifting and rotating. Hmm. Sounds like a Pilates program. Shifting. It basically is shift shift and rotating. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys had any cookie fails? Oh my gosh! I had two yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to tell us. Well, I I decided uh, because we were having I was having this cookie swap today to try to make a, a toffee recipe, and little did I know that humidity can affect whether or not toffee works. So that was already working against me. And then there were some issues with the recipe itself. So the first time I made it. The butter and the sugar completely separated, and when I poured it on the baking sheet, I had a puddle of butter and a 
oh. a lump of sugar. So that Yikes. was not good. That Did went you in the stir trash. It constantly? Yes. So that went into the trash. It, That's it, awful. And then the next time, the chocolate didn't work out right. And then I threw that in the trash. And then I oh. went back and <laughs> I read a whole lot of recipes and I finally, I almost got it. But I did serve the toffee. It was very tasty, but it wasn't as it wasn't perfect. And I'm a right. perfectionist, so I'm going to ask you a question. What butter did you use in that toffee in the first one? I used Plugra. Oh, I was going to say if it was the Costco, because that it has could have been the water, water in it, that would right. have wrecked it up. And that's but why I decided to use the Plugra. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wonder. You know what, Kathy? Um, seriously, I wonder if it was like too much butter fat. Mm-hmm. I know. The next time I do it, I'm going to do it with a Costco. Don't do it. It's too, it, it's too much butter fat, I bet you. Yeah, it was and a you disaster. Mixed it with brown, and you were mixing it with brown sugar for that recipe, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there was too much fat. Yeah, I think it was that. Yeah, it was a real problem. It was ugly. And the garbage, Dennis said, wow, the garbage really smells like chocolate. I said, oh, just be <laughs> quiet. <laughs> There was a lot. I mean, I threw out a lot. So I have a lot of fails. And every year, I have all my recipes for my cookies, but they're kind of scrawled on. I mean, I've had them for years. And I always forget when I make the cookies tiny instead of the regular size how I have to adjust the time. So I usually burn at least one um, cookie sheet full of cookies before I remember what the correct time is. Do I write it on the recipe? No. no. No, <laughs> every year, for at least for, one. For me, I think the you know because most of my recipes for us for my business are in. I mean, I have them written down, but I also have been doing it for enough years that I do it you know by memory. So, in doing so, um, and I just wrote a blog post about this the other day because it's it excellent. Happens. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because it it happens when you are adding. Uh, something to your dry ingredient. It, it happens with me with dry ingredients in particular. When I put a, a bowl of flour together and then have to add my salt and my leavener and in if this case I was making gingerbread so there were three different spices. Um, how many times have I forgotten? Even with my vanilla cookies, did I put the salt in? Did I put the baking powder in? I don't know if I did because I've answered the phone, I've gone to Twitter, <laughs> something's happened, you know, a million interruptions. And I'm getting old and my brain is addled as it is. So, <laughs> you know, so and what she's drinking. You and I'm drinking. I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking. I'm drinking a whiskey sour in a milkshake glass, I'm, I'll have you know. <laughs> so, so you know, a good, a good drinker never I, grinds her tools. <laughs> what did he say? I said a good drinker never blames her tools. Oh, that's true. Um, so I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, but so what I do is I I add my salt and my you know whatever I have to add. I do it sort of you know like like I'm doing it in a clock fashion. You know, starting at twelve o'clock, you add a salt. At one o'clock, you add your baking powder, and so on and so forth. So if you've got five additions, you can count them readily in the bowl. You can mm -hmm. see. It doesn't work for me. A lot of people say, oh, what I do is I take everything out, and I put it in front of me, and as I add it, I put it away, which makes perfect sense, and I used to do that. But then I would question myself, gee, did I bring it out in the first place? Right. So it helps me to have it, you know, dotted around the bowl so that I can actually see it and not have to ask myself whether or not I, I actually added it. So that's that's a very big help. Yeah, that was a great advice because I threw away one ruggle of dough this because I doubled the salt by accident and then I thought I might have and I tasted it raw and it was disgusting. Yeah. So yeah. See you're you're revealing all of our disasters. <laughs> Most people, they just get the little box. They don't know. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. You guys should have like a little disclaimer that says like 400 cookies have been like, yes. <laughs> killed in the process of making this 12 dozen. Um, right. we, do, we do have a question from Google Plus. Um, and then we're going to be, we're about five minutes away from ending the show just so you guys know. Um, uh, we do have a question on Google Plus uh, from Michelle Jenkins. She says, "Is separation also a problem with butter that has been frozen then thawed?" Uh, great, no. great question. No, not if you thaw it in the refrigerator. 
slowly. Right. It shouldn't it, it, no? It should never be a problem. Even how if long you does take it, take it out to and thaw? nuke it, I mean. How long? No, how long it should it thaw in the refrigerator? Is it like a day or two or? Yes. You know, at least over. You know, if you, I mean, if you're working in a pound, like I work in pounds, not in in. Um, I don't work in quarters. So for mm -hmm. me, I you know, because I keep. I mean, I keep a, at least 36 pounds of butter in my freezer at all times. So I'm always taking. <laughs> Look at that that space. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no food. It's just butter. But, um, so if you take it out and you just you know the night before, leave it on the the shelf in your refrigerator that is the farthest away from your freezer, then you'll be fine. And then the next day, bring it to room temperature and you'll be absolutely fine. Freezing butter is the greatest, the greatest thing known to man, I can tell you right now. Absolutely. We have a dessert chick on Twitter. I'm, I'm also following like our tweets on my phone, trying to organize everything so I can see everything at once. And she asked um, <clears throat> to both of you guys, do you guys ever have friends that uh, forget to say hello and immediately ask for the cookies? <laughs> She's like, so annoying. <laughs> Wait, what's the question? Say it again. Basically, do you ever have friends who just like, hey, how's it going? Where are my cookies? They forget, like, they, they're so obvious, they're so, uh, it's so obvious that they're there to grab the cookies from you instead of... Uh, no, our, our, my good friends would never do that. It's the, it's the peripheral a-holes who think you know who want, who ask for the rejects they're the ones who are you know who are asking that and they're they wouldn't get a crumb from me we have um, I'm some so generous people who come over with their kids you know once they come to visit the tree we um, and sort of have a little Christmas cheer and they head straight to the dining room where it's all cookie land you know the cookies are all around the table they barely say hello and go directly for the gumdrops they're, they're gumdrop fiends. Mm -hmm. Do you slap them with your hand? I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> I, do have, I do have a neighbor who, whose children, who, a neighbor who will text me or phone me every now and again, and she says, you know, the girls have been asking for your cookies. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I get, too, right. Yeah, right. They're asking for those cookies. You are. <laughs> you are. Hey, you know, I was watching a uh, a wedding show. I'm and I just got engaged like two months ago, and I was watching oh, a wedding. Show. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I was watching a wedding show, and they had this like a new trend. It seems like that there's cookie room, like an entire room. Oh God, cookies. Bless them. <laughs> I just thought I'm like, how did they even fulfill that order? Well, Was something like something had to take the place of this chocolate fountain. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> but they said it was the greatest thing ever. Like each person who went to their wedding was like, there was an entire room of cookies. Wow. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. I was like, yeah. oh, that would be fun to do. You know, because a lot of the people, there are a lot of caterers here in the city. Um, I've been to weddings where instead of um, you know, fancy plate of desserts, they'll do a bar of, you know, chocolate chip cookies and little bottles of milk and stuff like that. And that's always fun. Mm -hmm. I like the, I love the cookie room idea. That's genius. I love the, um, I love when you see when you have like a bottle here and you have a cookie that's, it's like hanging off the side, but they actually like cut it so that it yes. just sits there. How yes. do they, how do they do that? They basically, before they, Yes, yeah, so you have it. to cut it out before you bake it, and then um, in some cases you actually have to put a little thing on the on the back of the cookie, depending on the shape of the cookie, to anchor it to help anchor it. It's you know it, it's it's part architecture and part confectionery, which actually um, what's his name? Um, my my favorite, my Antonin Karem said that confectionery is the first cousin of architecture, and he was very very right. That's a great line. It is a great line, and it and I, it always stuck with me, and it's a it's so true. That's a that's a great um, place to end. Because <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get better than that. <laughs> uh, do you guys want to tell everyone where they can find you, and uh, maybe also um, what what cookie you're working on right now, or is there anything that uh, any recipes we should be on the lookout, or we should come to your sites and download, or is there anything um, that you guys want to add? Well, you can find me at uh, mrswheelbarrow.com, and if you only make one cookie this uh, season, you should make my peanut butter sandwich cookie, which is on Food 52, and it's called All I Want for Christmas Peanut Butter Cookies. 
And I would second that because that cookie is unbelievable. I actually used leftover that leftover filling for a filling for a cake. It's that good. Yeah, um, it's awesome. Yeah, it, it really is. And I, uh, you can visit my website, onetoughcookienyc.com, and um, I share no recipes there because then you wouldn't need me. Um, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter at The Tough Cookie. I'm on Facebook. Um, I love hearing from people. It's great fun. Um, I'm actually going to, when I'm on vacation, I plan on doing a little personal baking, and I think there's going to be some ginger chocolate cookies, and I think there's going to be maybe some um, some chocolate bark and some other, can, you know, more candy kinds of things that I don't get to make a lot of. So, and I'm pie crust. So I'm sure I love making crust. Yeah. So there you have it. Now, Jeff, what about you? Are we going to see any uh, baking anytime soon from you? Do I get my package in the mail? Oh, oh, where's your audio? Jeff, you're Jeff. muted. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff is oh, saying... Oh, it's very... Hello. 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 <laughs> I was going to say you're agreeing with me. You are sending me a package immediately. <laughs> yes, I uh, now I'm, I you know I still got to crank out my pizzelles and uh, I like to do uh, um, a bunch of uh, you know bark uh, dipped cookies and uh, I do the rum ball. They're just sort of all the all the standards, you know. Um, yeah. It's essentially the, uh, the Eagles' greatest hits album of cookies. Oh, I like that. <laughs> well, I'm available for tasting this year. I've decided to sit the baking situation out. I'm trying to lose a few pounds before a wedding. And um, but I, I figure if I'm not baking, then I'm only eating what people are giving me, as opposed to baking a dozen and eating the whole dozen and then eating yours as well. Um, <laughs> it's like my way of kind of keeping it on the down low. Um, but thank you guys so much for. Um, I know really this is sort fun. of an impromptu. Oh, it's great. Thank you, Thank Kathy. Thank you guys for giving up your time. That was terrific. Absolutely. Oh, no, it was awesome. When we woke up yesterday morning and I was like, oh, no, I didn't think we were going to be able to get together. <laughs> let's, let's make it happen. Let's go, Barrow. <laughs> it, it was, it was great well, to see you all. I would love to have you guys on again if you guys are available. Maybe as we get closer to, like, another cookie or another some sort of um, – we'll, we'll have to figure out another topic to talk about. Uh, we Easter. can talk about cookies. About Easter. what? People love, they love cookies around Easter. That would be great. Right. Okay, Valentine's we'll do that. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Valentine's Day would be good, too. I think Easter would be fun, too. That would be really my, cool. And my birthday. Is oh, my when, God, for sure. Jeff's birthday. Oh, my I God. I have that written down already, don't I? <laughs> hey, Jeff, we'll, we'll make it another pajama party. Well, I'll, I'll bring some more cream for my face. <laughs> no, try try something else. <laughs> I, at least don't, don't make it like a green, like a don't don't do a mask. You will have a hard time getting that off, by the way. Or yeah, don't do I don't, don't do Noxzema. I don't uh, I don't need to go to work with like bits of green plastic in my beard. <laughs> no, exactly. All right, guys. Um, Thanks. On, th on Thursday, we are having a show about holiday cocktails, which is going to be really fun, and we're going to have some friends tune in from around the world. So that should be cool. So join us uh, on Google Plus or on YouTube right. at Bake Space TV, and we will see you guys soon. Thanks so much for coming, and happy baking, guys. Thank Bye. you, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Yes. Thank you. It's just me and you, Jeff. This is called the awkward pause. <laughs> and I don't mean the dogs that we.